It's Pastor Alan Jackson. My guest today is Michael W. Smith. Uh, he's a new artist in Christian music, and we're trying to add a little momentum to his career. Feeling younger, as you say. Yeah. <laughs> I, I pulled up your... I just I was curious. I just pulled your stuff up. I Googled 18 million albums, 45 Dove Awards. So, you know, you're going to have to ramp it up a little bit, dude. I don't, I don't keep count, so... Quit dragging your feet. Let's do something. <laughs> uh, How you doing, Michael? I'm doing well. I'm doing well in the midst of the chaos and trying to stay positive. The good news is I know how the story ends. Yeah. And uh, But it's certainly heart-wrenching to watch what's going on in our country. So, uh, yeah, we need to put, we need, I guess we need to pray more and there's lots of prayer movements going on and, you know, I pray the church will really rise up and, because that's really where the battle's going to be won. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, so. I think, I think the point, from, from the seat I sit in, it feels like the whole thing is to wake the church up. Yeah. You know, we were kind of content and, yeah. I, would I don't know if we that. were asleep, but we were. We might have been taking a nap. <laughs> and I think, you know, um, all of a sudden prayer is no longer just an exercise. It's a necessity. It's a necessity, and, yeah. And those parts of our Bible that we were reading, thinking, oh, someday, maybe. And now it's online every day. It's and, here. Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy time. So your family doing okay? Yeah. 16 grandkids? 16 grandkids as of three weeks ago. Everybody healthy? Everybody's healthy. Yeah, no, God. No COVID. Um, we've been very fortunate, you know. I told Deb this morning, it's just like— we were praying for our breakfast. I, I just, I just, God, we have, we have food on the table, and we have a roof over our head, and b that alone is we're blessed. We um, are, yeah. So you're back traveling? Well, I did something a couple months ago or a month and a half ago that I thought I would never do. Uh, me and Stephen Curtis Chapman and Mac Powell uh, did a drive-in theater tour, and that was really quite fun. I didn't, I mean, no frills, no catering. There's a porta potty and a little white tent out back. <laughs> that was our backstage, you know. And I actually drove to half of the driving theaters in my car. But, you know, people were just itching to get out. It could have been anybody. So it was, no, it was a that. special, special tour. And we're going to do it again, start September 19th. And right now I'm just working on a brand new project that I'm really, really excited about. Something I've always wanted to do. And I'm just doing a Kind of do it. It's called still, and it's just one of my favorite things to do on a piano. Is just put my fingers on the piano, and I don't know what I'm going to do. I love to improv, and I've written a lot of those, and so I just quote scripture over these improvisations. Ha! Huh. And uh, that comes out in a month. So. Oh, I want yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's about 28 minutes long. There's there's sometimes I'll, you know, I go. Uh, yeah. Whatever, guys, there's so many scriptures. I've mainly stayed in the Psalms. Deb talked me into getting into the New Testament before the whole thing was over, so I did that, you know. And I pronounced a blessing at the very end of it. But there'll be times you'll hear a scripture, you know, all I want to do is dwell in the house of the Lord forever, you know, all the days of my life. That's what I long for. And then all of a sudden, you won't hear scripture for 45 minutes, and it's just this thing that— So it's sort of a, a really calming deal, and I think— it could be very, very timely in the midst of people who are fearful and they're tired and they've been quarantined and they're about to lose their minds. And this thing, I think, could be a real tool to really minister to people. So, so where can we find it? Michaelwsmith.com. Yeah, I guess we can. You know, I don't think we're releasing any physical product. It's you know, it's crazy how times have changed. I was on an interview the other day because I just released Waymaker in Portuguese, and uh, <laughs> which, that was a challenge in of itself. <laughs> That was a hard one with a really, Alini Barros, a really famous singer in Brazil, and we've worked together on and off over the last 10 years. But they say the last five years in Brazil, there's no physical product. It's all digital and streaming. And so that's just the, that's just the way it is. It's just sort of the time we're living in. But that's okay. That's fine. I think, I think when people find out what it is and sort of get a taste and experience it, I think people will gravitate to it. It, it. It ministers to me. I know that sounds weird, you know, but I mean, I'm just listening to these scriptures. Just I'm speaking over myself. So it could, could be anybody. It could have been you. It could have been Don. No. But, but the fact is, is, is the word is just being <clears throat> spoken over people, and I think that's what people need. It is one of the greatest challenges in this window for me has been managing my emotions yeah. and my thoughts. Yeah, and I've got some playlists that when I get low. I get outside alone and crank it up. And so yeah. you've been talking to me a lot when I'm out in the barn or I'm cutting Good. wood. Or so I look forward to this. 
good. I, I was thinking about a little bit because my sense of the COVID in 2020 is, I, I think we'll come through this, but I don't think we're going to land where we were. Right. And that's unsettling. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about talking to you today, and when I first remember you, early 80s, Christian music, music in general was so different. Mm -hmm. Christian music used to be lined up along Music Row with Word and Benson. And, right. I mean, there was brick and mortar, and they actually still made albums and CDs, and you did a whole project, and you took the whole project, and that world is gone. Right. But you have flourished. I mean, you're still uh, strengthening the body of Christ and still making music. And, I mean, you're in a new place, but I don't think we miss that. And it, it kind of made me smile because I thought, okay, Lord, I'm looking forward to this new place on the other side of 2020. Right. He's got this. He does have it. Yeah. But I need, I've, been trying to, I've been trying to identify those places where the world shifted and I survived. Right. And, I mean, the music's not, you know, nobody's ever accused me of making music. <laughs> but we've seen a lot of things change. Yeah. And we've um, come through that, and we're going to come through this. Yeah. You got any big takeaways so far? Lessons you've learned, or uh, I've learned a lot about myself. How so? Good, the good and not so good. Um, things I was addicted to, maybe like, I mean, the simple thing of just commercialism. You know, I'm going to go buy that. I'll go buy that. You know, and and there's all and there's obviously there's a long list, but that was just one of them. And just thinking, and I realized, going, I don't need anything at all. For the rest of my life, I don't need one thing other than my family, my walk with Christ, you know, my friends. That's what, that's what I need. I don't need any material thing ever. So the Lord comes back or time out of here. You know, so just so just little, little stuff like that. Just going and then your thought life, and then you're sort of you're you're forced to either sort of abide or scramble someplace else, you know, you feel it because you're always busy and you're, oh, I got this tour and you're doing this and, and all of a sudden, all oh, that thing comes to a halt. It makes you look inward a bit. I bet so, you've had, you've been at home more in the last six months than you've been in a long, long time. Ever. Yeah. I'm like fortunate to have my studio on the farm. I'm sort of got to, but still you're, you know, being confined. But it's actually been really, a real positive of it, Alan. It's been, it's been really great for Debbie and I. And uh, I'm, maybe that might, not be the case for a lot of couples, you know. Um, I know it's been tough, you know, and then people got kids at home, they can't go to school, and the list goes on. But for some reason, it's just been a beautiful time for us. And uh, and we've got, and and it was a bit of a change of grandkids, and can we see the grandkids, and everybody's nervous, and then we got a grandbaby coming along. I mean, we didn't see our grandchild till 14 days after it was born because everybody was so nervous, you know, like, oh, well, you went, you went out and hung out with that person and their family had go, all that kind of stuff. And so Put you on just, a hazmat suit and go. Yeah, exactly. So, but, um, but no, we're, we're good. And yeah, it's, it's been, it's been actually really good for our whole family, actually. So, and we're all, we, I mean, we're all gathered. Nobody wears masks in my house. You know, we're all, to, we're all together and, and we're COVID free. We're very grateful. Well, we're far enough into this now. Some of the mystery and the fear is diminishing if we'll turn our brains on. Yeah. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. We are going to come through. We, there, there is life after COVID. There is. I'm looking forward to that. Me too. But I've talked to a lot of people for whom it's it's been a—there's been a, an opportunity with family mm -hmm. without so many of the distractions. Mm -hmm. So I think that has been a blessing. How to hold on to that and not give it up as we start to re-engage and re-emerge is a challenge. But mm -hmm. God will help us. Yeah. We got to find a way to get churches open again. I wholeheartedly agree with that. And concerts open. The, the, we need to be with people. I know. Who knew? I know. That's what the scripture says, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. But for those of us that live with people, I think there were times we thought we needed to be away from people. Right. And that's one of the things I have repented for. Yeah. People are a blessing. They yeah. are not an intrusion. Right. I agree. And it's uh, it has really uh, brought that reality to to the forefront in my heart. Mm, it's good. So what you got coming up? You're always showing up someplace in Europe or in some fun yeah, place, or I you mean, got plans? Everything, everything really has been moved to next year. Uh, <laughs> Are we going to breathe next year? Everything's gotten pushed. Uh, you know, it, who knows? And it might not be till summer. I don't know. I, and you know what? I'm fine with that. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I just, I just continue to try to find creative ways to minister to the church and. Whether it's you know, and I'm not a, I don't like getting on social media that much, but I, f I feel like it's effective for me, and I don't, 
you know, my biggest my biggest post are me with my grandkids. Go figure that one. Out. I love it. So, but but just being able to lead worship and speak into people's lives, you know, I'm going to continue to do that. Um, other than the Still Project, um, um, the only thing I'm really really excited about is I wrote this song called Conversation that was on a Million Light CD, and it was about. Um, really sort of about the white man, black man, and just, and it's just, that record came out two years ago, so a little ahead of its time, you know, but on some level. So I've redone that, uh, an acoustic sort of stripped down version, and it's extremely powerful, and I think people need to hear it. And so I think that's a lot of what we need to do, is if the other side will do it, let's, can we just talk? Can we just have a conversation? And that's what the song's about. We have to find some ways to have dialogue again. Yeah. And stop talking at one another and find yeah. a way to stand together. Yeah, I agree. It's doable. It is. It felt like for a season we made real progress, and then we've had this difficult patch. Mm-hmm. And I don't just mean the last few months, but but that most progress in my life comes that way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not this unrelenting upward curve. Right. And so I'm not really discouraged by it. I think we have to do that, and then you evaluate, and we find a new way forward. God will help us. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm in one of the my lessons in this year has been I'm I'm listening to the Lord in ways I've never listened before. Yeah, I I would that's because that's part I would feel that way about myself as well. Because what what I used to do doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean the way I was living my life is not relevant right now. Mm-hmm. So I've got to hear from the Lord. Mm-hmm. And desperation is not an awful thing. Nope. You know, I keep saying, people say, you know, they feel desperate. I'm like, that's going to be a good place. Yeah. God can meet you in those desperate places. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to have you here. You know, we couldn't, when we first started, we started the first week of May around National Day of Prayer. Right. And I said, you know, we're just, I'm not going to stay inside. We're just, we've got to have people. So we started outside and we said, well, we'll do a service on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday so we can social distance over multiple days. And we liked it so well. We said, let's have a little church. So yeah. we've been outside for yeah. 16 weeks. And then about four or five weeks into it, we said, we need a revival. And we all, we've talked about them all our lives. Mm-hmm. But none of us have really ever seen one. I mean, revival used to be a week long service in a tent when right. I was a kid. Right. And we just prayed it was over so we could quit sweating at church at night. Yeah. So we got the pool out, and we're doing baptisms every Saturday night. Yeah. And awesome. Inviting the artists that weren't working and said, hey, you want to come? And you're not exactly in that category, but you were gracious enough to be here. Oh, yeah, thank you. And the, the Spirit of the Lord's been doing something remarkable in the people. I love that, Alan. It's awesome. And I, you know, I don't know what the outcome of it completely is going to be, but that's not really my business. I'm just going to keep encouraging keep the it. folks. And yeah. So we really appreciate you taking the time to be around this weekend. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. How can we all pray for you? Wisdom, clarity, understanding, all, you know, that's, yeah, it's, it's too late to miss it, you know. So, I, you know, I, I pray the Lord's Prayer almost every day, so that's really, I kind of make it my own, you know. So that's probably a good place to start, but just lead me not into temptation, you know. Um, I'm real careful about what I look at these days. You just can't. Curiosity can get you in big trouble. And so that's what I tell people and tell myself all the time. So just stay stay focused and cry out for wisdom and, and understanding and and uh and my family. Yeah. That they'll you know, you start you start thinking about your grandkids when you see the stuff that's going on in the world and you're tempted to go, Oh my gosh, what's gonna happen to this kid? You know, so but, but you have to go, Lord. You've got this. You've got my kids. You've got my grandkids. And I trust that you'll protect them and you'll... And if they do have to go through some sort of uh, hardships or whatever, that God, you'll give them the strength and power to, to do it. The one who watches over us doesn't slumber or sleep. But that is hard to entrust. Yeah. But you know, it's a myth that we can secure ourselves or anybody else. We can't. <laughs> we are. I mean, if, if we've learned anything this year, we're vulnerable. Yeah. You know, to things we didn't even know we were vulnerable to. In fact, I think that's one of my prayers because I, I real I think the disruptions will come more frequently mm-hmm. in the future, and I think they'll probably be more severe. Mm-hmm. And learning to trust the Lord 
Yeah. Because all those ways we thought we could secure our future. I would have told you there was no scenario under the sun where we would close the church for 15 weeks. Yeah. I mean, you know, there was none. I couldn't. And we did. Yeah. And I was like, and God's still on the throne. Who he knew? Is. So yeah. he'll bring us through. Yeah. And he'll bring everybody else through. You know, if you're listening and your world has shifted and your future's not as clear and your past routine isn't going to work for what looks like it's in front of you, God is faithful and he knows how to bring us through this. I trust him. There was a time, and, and we're not that different in age, you know, the ambition to become and was a strong. And today, I have a stronger desire to finish well. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't really care about talking about where I've been. Yeah. But I want the Lord to be pleased. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to coast. Right. You know, I want to. Too much at stake. There is. Yeah. It's like everything's been preparation for this point. Yeah. And however, whatever that looks like and however God wants to give shape to it when on the other side of this, I'm in. Me too. Well, my guest today is Michael W. Smith. Um, his contribution, not just to Christian music, to music, to the body of Christ, to the church, to my life, has been huge. So thank you for being here and taking a few minutes. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.